very much indeed for uh, coming by and connecting with us even the more. Uh, we are indeed grateful that you can be uh, our special guests. The issue of clothing industry, uh, whether or not we are doing our, we are doing our best, you see a lot more people getting interested in clothing and what you do with it in terms of becoming seamstresses, fashion designers, tailors. Now they're upping their game. A lot more designs are coming through. They are making, they are modernizing it. But the fundamental is that you cannot produce the raw materials, change it, add value to it, and use it. Then what it means is that we are not optimizing the, the, the gains. Because at some point, before you can say that the industry is on its feet, what it means is that the value chain has to be complete. So it's not as though you are dependent on one country, even though it's not, only, it's not uh, too bad a thing to want to depend on other countries for other stuff. But if you largely depend on some people to get what you want, then it cripples it because at a point where production there's the value chain, there's the cut in there. It affects the production as well and the quality of it. So let's have that conversation again, especially for those of you who are interested in the clothing industry. And that's why we have the CEO of Kofi Gold Clothing here in the studio. What I'm wearing is fully Kofi Gold Clothing. Uh, as I said, anyhow you want it, fabric, shades, colors, all you need to do is to connect with this man. Hi. It's good to see you. Good to see you too. Thank you very much for coming by on a Friday like this. Most welcome. How was your week? Uh, the week has been okay. Mm. You know, so much to do, um, so much planning. You know, mm. with Production House, there's always a plan line mm. uh, to put things to order, new creation. Because uh, when things are slow, you have to beef up things to make sure you okay. get things up. But right. so that's opportunity time for you to create more design. So it's been a lot of creation. There's okay. a lot of creation at the production center. So I think uh, it's been great. Okay. God, well, we've choose to do this work. Okay. <laughs> I, it's, it's, I, it's your Christian, no, not Christian, your English name, Joseph? Yes, I used to have that word. Um, Joseph, when I was working with Americans, but I realized I wasn't an English man. Oh, okay. I'm an Ewe man, so I have to go for my grandfather's name. Okay, so the thing is, I met a man <laughs> who watches and has been looking for you. He said you were work he was working with you in the same office. I'm too sure he's watching. Yeah. And one day you just got up and said, you know what, I'm done. <laughs> and I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, pam, pam, atale. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> I'm going to pass that and then you are gone. So of course. His name is Joseph. Joseph is true. <laughs> it's true. Joseph? It used sounds... to be, I used to be, you know, that was an English name. Okay. But sincerely, you know, we are Africans. Okay. And we need to come back to our roots, you okay. know. Sometimes we don't know how much those things impact us. Right. You know, we try to. We learn it. We right. live in the world of learning. Hmm. Because at a point you feel like, Putting someone's identification on you makes you feel better. Mm. I realize, no, when you don't know your root, that's where you choose all this name. I see. Because nobody even know me if I say, now if you mention Kofi or Kofi. Yeah. But if you say Joseph, there are a thousand plus one Joseph yeah, over yeah, there. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Somebody will even attribute you to a cat. Yeah. But you know people like cat and they call it Joseph. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, so yeah. who knows if in the night somebody threw a stone, I'm going to be a victim. Well, anyway. Joseph, the Joseph name even resonates with the issues of colors. You know, the, the man with many colors, of the course. father bought, you know. Of course. That. So that's why you're dealing with colors. So we are talking largely about the clothing industry yeah. and how it's... We can see a lot of growth and mm -hmm. improvement, but there's still a, a, a lot more to do. Uh, the, those who are going into this industry, is it okay to want to say, I'm going into it to make money? Well, first of all, I always advise people on this basis. If you want to start something for your life, never, and I use the word never think of going to that particular thing to make money. Because um, I don't believe we make money when we make steps or decisions. Money makes us when we offer our service. Mm. Right? Mm. Money makes us when we offer our service. And that is a basic, the challenge we face with now. That everybody thinks we go into business, we go into this job, we go with complete education and we get job. 
and we're going to make money. And people can l tell you the list of things they put down. If you make this amount of money, the, the kind of things I want to do, the traveling journey, the cars I want to buy, at the stage that he has not even started yet. Mm. And my brother, this is the killer disease affecting many young entrepreneurs. Let's draw the balance. So they say a lot of the, the approach to agriculture at the time was just to uh, subsistence, where you, you, you do it to feed family and the community. Mm -hmm. That was how we were approaching yeah. it. Then they introduced agribusiness because then they realized that the approach to the thing is very, very important. Mm -hmm. So, well, I, I, I want us to admit that, yes, maybe the money to get the money is to get clothes, uh, cars and all that. But if I also approach the game of uh, clothing mm -hmm. as money-making, it brings, it, it fills me with some sense of, uh, you know, seriousness. I want to be serious with it, isn't it? To say that this feeds me, it feeds family and fixes my needs. Of course, it will always fits your need mm. because uh, that's why I use the word money will find you. Okay. Money will chase you. Money mm. will locate you. Mm. If you go it, into it with a concept, because you just mentioned something, we people go into agriculture to feed community, mm. to feed family. That was what we were, we were doing. And it is still the same. Mm. If you go to some villages, it's the same. But it doesn't mean that when you are feeding the family, you cannot sell some of your product. I hope you understand. Mm. You still, you can eat all because okay. we have farmers who are farm at this side, farm here, farm. They don't farm one place only, like six different places. I've had experience to be in a village to see my uncle's farm. And I never knew they have like 10 different farms, 10 different farms, and they are large. Yes, the kids will go get some foodstuffs and come, but still you sell some. Mm. They sell more, they sell almost like 70%, Okay. you see? But the concept, how you approach it is very important mm. because today the younger ones today let me i'm still young i'm not um, yeah. i'm not old i tell you still now i've not approached my business with making money you believe me really i'm telling you the truth i'm still investing i'm still growing the more you grow the more you realize that the expenditure mm -hmm. of investment you have to put in that business. Mm -hmm. Unless I say I've arrived. If I, I was telling a couple of guys recently that ah, when I was only having the production center and I'm alone working and having some contractors who work for me on the fashion business, mm -hmm. I'm self-sufficient. I'm more rich. Mm -hmm. I have more money. I see. But when I employ all of you, it looks like you are taking my money away. Why are you doing that? You know, just a joke I said to them. Yeah. But I realized that time it was small. Mm. But now it has expanded. Mm -hmm. That time maybe I have 20 clients. Now I have 200 clients. Mm -hmm. That time it was just something the client, clientele doesn't demand so much. But now the clientele demand, I mean, high standard finishing. It's like everything is changing. I see. Let's then talk about production costs and... What comes at the end of the business in terms of profit? Mm -hmm. Things are, the uh, price are hiking in these yeah. days. Yeah. It, it might not be so. What, what, what then are you doing to bridge this gap so that it helps somebody also watching? Because I'm, I'm not going to say that I'm going to sew this clothes as well, which looks expensive. Because, the fa because of the fabric and the things I've used and accessories, is expensive. Now, it will become cost also to the other, the buyer. The buyer, yeah. So how do you bridge that gap so that it becomes, you know, <laughs> less affordable. expensive? Yeah, less expensive. That's, let me use the word affordable. Mm. This is how it goes. You see, every young entrepreneur, you are a starter. Remember one thing. When you make money out of the very business you're doing, Please, invest that money back into the business. Mm. Yes, I'm telling you. I'm not joking. If I tell the real story of Kofi Gold, the foundation, our, our foundational fund, right, or the generation of money we started with, is 40 pesos. When I resigned from white collar job, and trust me, I got to work some, if you know Atomic Down, Mm -hmm. You know Atomic Down mm -hmm. to um, Ashoma Nested, where they call Obahima, mm -hmm. 
We have a house. My auntie have a house there on the hills. I have to walk from Atomic down to that distance. Not because I don't have money, but sometimes I've sold one dress. I need to buy the, the raw material. Because as you're saying, prices are going up now. Mm. What do you do? Imagine I sold two dresses last night, and I walk in to purchase 10 years out of that two dresses. If today prices might have gone up, or dollar is up, price are up, whatever happened to prices, do you think it will affect me much? Mm -hmm. I still have something to control the market. Because the situation we are in now wouldn't change. But you can make the change. And that is one thing the Guinean businesses sometimes doesn't really, really, really think about. Mm. I'm still investing. I'm still investing. The way I started, I'm still doing the same thing. I see. I'm telling you. I get the results. A lot. Good results. Look, the results is so good. Let me give you one result I've got. I've been able to raise more than 15 keys finished school. More than that. I can't even... I can't even remember. The last one is in my office now to go to the university. Wow. <laughs> so what results again do I want? I've not built a house. I'm, more than 15 kids. I said 15. Sorry to myself. Those who want to go to SHS, there were more than 20 or 30. I mean, those who want to finish university. I mean, community, a whole community. I've been able to do. That alone makes me happy. I've not built a mansion, which is not my business. I've not bought a bright car. I still enjoy Trotro. Of course, they are my drivers. But I've been able to see somebody's life impacted. And it's still going on. I, I won't count numerous people who have benefited from coffee gold through medical surgery, hot numb, health, many, 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 recently 37 and other places. I'm seeing results. And the results keep coming. Just last two days, the education minister rehashed what you said last week, Friday. And it's not as though it's new the gap that is created between academia and the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, he was bitterly complaining about it. And that's why I have... So as much as I, I feel that it's, he's in the right state to say those things, I believe that you, are, you can fix it. You are there to fix it. And of so that's, that's one sign. But then we spoke about how young people who also want to get into this are unskilled or do not have the skill to meet the current demands and the prevailing, you know, uh, conditions of what people are demanding as far as clothing is concerned. Then we also started talking about what we must do. But practically, anybody who decides today that I want to be a coffee gold, what must a person do? Go to the roadside tailor first or go to school first? Or go to school first and come back to the roadside tailor? Which one is which? Because clearly the issue of gap created between academia and industry is still going to be there once we have not seen any step. Yes. Practical step. Yeah. So what can we do practically so that somebody could learn from that? That's what I always say to myself. If I should come back to this world mm. again, right, myself, mm -hmm. with the experience of her, I would love, number one, to serve people from all angles. Mm. Right, if somebody wants to be coffee go today, number one, you need someone to teach you, right? How do you approach that person who has that skill, knowledge to teach you? Mm. You know, Koku, we are living the dispensation people think, feel they know more than you and I. Mm. I'm telling you. And the feeling and the thinking is nothing about that an iPhone is holding and he found you using a yam phone or something. You know, the sense of human in our young generation, mm -hmm. right, doesn't position them to come humbling. Let me give you one example. I was, when I was young, I think between 17 years, I was washing for somebody. I wash his clothes and make some money. And it's great. Today, I'm 43. The person still connect to me. He walked to me and called me boss. Mm. Yes. He was just at my end last week. He was at my lunch, and I introduced him to some of you people that know. This is my big boss. I wash his clothes. He's a very good man. And he paid me well. I never have a rest, you know, a car afford, non payment. Every time he pays me well. How do you approach the future? It's your future. If you want to be coffee gold, it's not my future. It's your future. How do we approach your future? Imagine. 
I was telling you last week that somebody came, he said, want to do his service with me. I said, fine. And the person is telling me I need to pay him because he came from the university to do his service with me. And I asked him, I come to make me a billionaire? Let's put that aside. A couple of weeks ago, I had a call from a certain woman who is doing a master's in fashion. Mm -hmm. She is a teacher in one of the high schools. You know, it was so funny. You know how I respond to my call. My call always comes, because I'm a businessman, I want to give you the first reception of very good. This woman called me, hello. I said, hello, madam. How are you? I said, I'm fine. And I'm coming to your place to learn how to do this. I mean, just control the phone. So I was very quiet, like three minutes. I was listening to her. I said, madam, have you finished? She said, yes. I said, okay. If this is how you are coming to my institution, my blood and my water and my sweat, do it. Count yourself out. I told her on the phone. Oh, sorry. I said, no. You don't do this. Approach me well. Mm. And do you know the funny thing? The person who gave him the contact is my family friend. We've been good friends for more than 15 years. And what she needs, she has been to other places, she couldn't get it. And she believes she can get it from my end. I said, yes. To extend, when she, I, I finally allowed her to come, I said, look, when she came, I said, madam, let me tell you one thing. I'm not Kofi Gold. We are Kofi Gold. We want to build this country and leave, make sure we leave the next generation with greater opportunities. Mm. If you are a lecturer or you're a teacher and you speak to me, you've never met me before, like this on the phone, what are you telling me? Mm. 